Hi. Okay, I gotta tell you a story. It happened last night, and I've been debating whether to tell you this or not, or wait a little bit longer until I know more. But I think uh, I think I'm gonna run things live completely, to, so we are on we are all in the same page. Do you remember Winston, our little puppy, Podenko? He was rescued last year. He came to us with clear signs of abuse, broken jaw, that face, those ears. Actually, just two days ago. I, I put up a long video telling his entire story. You can go and check it out if you want. Okay, so yesterday as I was going to bed, uh, I was checking my, my messages last thing before going to bed, just in case there's an emergency. And then I get a, I get a message from Louise. Louise is uh, Winston's adoptant in the UK. A wonderful woman, really. I tell you, that woman is just incredible. She has built uh, an amazing home for, for, his, for her dogs and herself, and she lives for her dogs. It's a very special home. Now, Louis sent me a message telling me that, uh, that there was something wrong with Winston, that he had been losing weight in the last weeks. He had been vomiting, not eating properly. They took him to the hospital, and uh, he was uh, vomiting with some strange, strange discharge. And they have found a mass, a mass uh, in his uh, stomach and bowels. And that's really worrying. He, Winston is now at the hospital and we're waiting for some more tests uh, to be carried on. They did an ultrasound and it looks like there is a mass, a tumor of sorts. My first reaction was, it cannot be. He's too young, he's just two years old. Very strange that he has a mass. Um, it's strange, but it is possible. But there could be other things. It could be an abscess. It could be... It could be a foreign object, a foreign body. Maybe he's swallowed something and uh, created an infection and he's now dealing with it. There could be other things. And then I went to bed, thinking of Winston thinking how could I help him from here? How could I help Luis uh, with other than just some words of comfort? I went to bed. I woke up and there's nothing. So it's now uh, 10.39 here in Spain. It's 9.30 in the UK. So I guess they are in a hospital and we're waiting for some news. Linda is going to call them and we're going to know more. Obviously, if he needs to go into surgery, he is going to go into surgery. Louis is gonna is gonna take care of that. She's a she's a wonderful, responsible, and capable uh, dog owner, and she has no issues. So Winston is well cared for. There's no need for us to intervene. There's no need to for us to fundraise for him. That's fine. We do it. We do it when there is a need. But in this case, it's fine. And why did why did I want to tell you this? Uh, because very often people say to me, ah, you take dogs all over the world. Why you're flying the dogs? You're taking them to places. You never know about them anymore. <sighs> you see, I wanted to show you that we do. We do know about our dogs. We remain involved in their lives. We build a relationship with the owners. And that is actually the reason why we never charge an adoption fee because we rather entrust our dogs to great owners than charge owners for an adoption. There's no point. What is the point for me to charge 300, 400 for an adoption for a dog that has costed us many, many, many thousands to recoup some costs? That in a way just changes the relationship between me and the adoptants. This is why this community has never charged for an adoption fee and never will. And right here watching this video, there are hundreds and hundreds of adoptants that can confirm that they adopted from us and they were never asked a single penny. Nothing, never, ever, nothing. Many of them became donors afterwards or they were donors before. Some of them didn't and it's fine. Totally fine, totally fine. I never allowed uh, money to get into in the middle of the relationship built with our families. Um, and this is one of these cases. You see, Luis 
Louise is amazing. She is taking amazing care of Winston. She's giving her life for him. And we love her for that. We love our Winston. He lives in a, in a, a wonderful place. The stupid fly is killing me today. You see, it's the end of the summer here in Spain and all the flies they have there, they know the time has come. So they are just uh, they're going crazy. It's 9.30 in the UK, as I said. Winston should be having his uh, visit and they should be deciding whether to operate or wait a bit longer, which I don't think so. And, uh, and they're going to be deciding the, the surgery strategy and all of that. And I want this community to leave a word for her, for Luis and for Winston. You see, I'm not, uh, I'm not the praying type. Actually, I don't pray. But for those of you that pray, I know this is very powerful. So I want you to pray for him. I want you to leave a note, to leave a word for Winston and Louis. Because just in case there is something out there and he hears you, then I'm sure Winston is going to be very glad to hear from all of, from all of us today. Other than that, uh, I'm just going to, to a school uh, meeting about my kids and then I'm going to be preparing uh, tomorrow's video. We're going to be introducing you to Benji, a dog that desperately needs help. And I will be telling you more about, uh, about that on, on tomorrow's video. But for now, I just wanted you to be aware that Winston is at the hospital, that he's having a wonderful life and that he wants to cling on to that life. He needs to continue living that life. And next time somebody says that we have no way of knowing where our dogs are going and because they are in another country, just think of that video. Think of this video. I go to bed thinking and connecting uh, with my dogs whenever they are. And if there's something we can do, we'll always do it because, because they're family. Okay, fingers crossed for Winston. Take care and I'll see you later. I'll keep you posted. Take care.